The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next, best-selling author Lisa Bevere draws from her own experience, biblical women, and the world of fairy tales as she explores Godmothers. It actually originated with the early church. When people got born again, they lost everything. They lost their families, they lost their money, they lost their place and culture. And so they would say, all right, I'm going to be your godparent. I'm gonna come alongside of you and I'm gonna walk with you on this journey of growing in Christ. We're so excited that we've got Lisa Bevere back today. I, if you know Lisa and John, Messenger International, what a great minister. I'm going to let her tell you about that just in a moment. But she's back, and here's here's the thing. I, it, it, it kind of stunned me. Well, Lisa's written on Godmothers. And I, my first reaction was I didn't know they'd been into studying the mafia. I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, they're in Colorado. They're not in New York or Chicago. I mean, but I think pretty heavy in uh, Colorado now, too. It's amazing what they've done. But this is fabulous. Why you need one and how to be one. Lisa and John are two of our very favorite people on the planet. And uh, Lisa says that she looks at me as a father, and I'm honored by that. And uh, she's just a real blessing. I so, met her. Yeah, and met her. Betty, well, you are, too. Oh. She, she, she's, she's you a, are our daughter. a hero. <laughs> she's our daughter. I'm I think she, I daughter. just heard the reference that, you know, I feel like she just said it to people I know. Mm -hmm. I don't remember saying Betty's a mother to me. I don't know. You, you, you want to add that to your <laughs> to your to your line? Yeah. But um, I wish we had the crowd here because when Lisa and John come, as people are here, they're just always excited. So I know you're excited, and we're going to talk about this book. I want you to tell everybody though, just real briefly, about Messenger International mm -hmm. because it's a it's a phenomenal thing. Life outreach, life today. We've we've supported it. Yeah. It's like you all supported what we do. Absolutely. But tell us about Messenger. So. Uh, about 10 years ago, John decided it would be fun to give away more books every year than we sell. I thought it sounded like a financial crisis, but um, <laughs> he just said, I really feel like there's pastors and leaders who are persecuted or impoverished and they cannot get resources. And so he said, let's give away 250,000 books. I threw up in my mouth. I was like, that is so crazy. <laughs> We're in a downturn economy. But you know what, James, and this is something that you guys have modeled so well for us, we as Christians have to always operate in the opposite spirit of the world. You know, the world is super excited, like New York Times, Jesus is like, I don't care about that. I'm more excited about what you give away than what you sell. Mm -hmm. And there's a completely different economic system. And so we made a commitment 10 years ago to start giving away resources. And of course, this would include Bibles, not just our books. And at this point, we've given away 41 million resources oh in 111 languages. And you guys have That's partnered awesome. with us, of course, because it's Golf. So we try to make it like competition and giveaway, like it all goes together. They have a big, they have a big uh, fundraiser there yep. around golf tournament. And when I used to get play golf, I <laughs> go and participate. Now we just send Terry money. Terry comes. Terry yeah, comes yeah, for yeah, you. Oh yeah, he does. Our, yeah. our son-in-law and our grandkids go. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if they wanted to learn about what all you're doing, what's the website they'd go to? So probably easiest to go to lisabevere.org or they could go to messengerinternational.org. All right, so Either if they one. go to Lisa Bevere, though, you'll be it, introducing it Messenger them, too. Absolutely. Okay. It's all kind of together. All right. Yeah. You heard that. And, and here's the book that's in the bookstores. Get it online today if you will do what Lisa has done with us, and that's help rescue those who are trafficked. We reach those who are become slaves sex slaves, they actually get these young girls uh, addicted, whatever it takes, to totally control them. Yeah. It's horrific. It's beyond anything you could ever imagine. Breaks our heart to think that anyone is trapped by that and that people would exploit children, but it happens. Mm -hmm. She, like Sheila Walsh, has been many times, and others you know, to the mission field yeah. to see not only feeding and water and what it does, but Lisa's been several times just like Sheila Walsh, to where the trafficking is. Yeah. And so we would gladly send this book to you that you can go get at the bookstores or online uh, just to say thank you as we send you other 
things that will bless you because we want to bless you not only with the teaching and sharing, but just put something in your life that, you know, came from love because of the love you shared with others. Now, you said you wanted to talk about uh, these two chapters. There's 13 chapters here. You want to talk about nine and 10. Yes. When our fairy tales go away. And then the last one, the gender gap. So take off on those two chapters. Um, Well, so I feel like right now we're in a situation where we are seeing a breaking between Adam and Eve. You know, God is the one who said it's not good for man to be alone. And then he said, what's going to make that good is I'm going to create woman. And I'm going to bring woman alongside the man as an answer to be embraced rather than a problem to be controlled. And God is the one that said male and female together is so very good. And so there's a strength a man brings to the table and then a strength the woman brings to the table. And then one of the things I've loved for both of you, even though I have a different personality than Betty, I see how much you value Betty And yet you don't say, well, Lisa's not Betty, so I don't value Lisa. You value my unique gifting. You value Betty's unique gifting. And I think a lot of times that women are starting to rise now. They were oppressed in a lot of different settings, a lot of different, you know, career paths, and sadly in the church. Women are starting to find their voice. And what I'm afraid about is how they're going to use it. So for an example, uh, when I was pregnant with Alec, when I met you, I got really large. I, 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 was, I was hot. It was Florida. I <laughs> ate ice cream every single night. We were so poor, though John weighed 138 pounds, and I was over 170. <laughs> and I remember sitting on him one night, and he struggled to try to get up. And I, I was on the ground, and I thought to myself, I am so strong. No, I was just fat. I was just fat. I was just pregnant. I was just large. And somehow we have associated strength with holding people down. Mm -hmm. But to be really strong, we got to pick people up. Mm -hmm. And so even though I could sit on John and hold him down, I've never been able to pick him up and carry him. Mm -hmm. And I think as women have risen right now, they have a choice. Does that God-breathed mandate to take what is not good, which is Adam alone? We have so many men alone, trapped in pornography, Mm -hmm. so many men alone, purposeless, no vision. They think it's better for them to be alone. They don't know it's not good. As women, are we going to take what uh, was good on our life and add good to the men? Or are we going to treat men the way they treated us? They held us down. Now we're going to hold them down. And as God's daughters, we can't do that. We've got to use our strength to lift. And so I feel like right now there's this mistake in what's going on. So when we're talking about godmothers, it, interestingly enough, it's not a mafia thing. It's not even a fairy tale thing. It actually originated with the early church. When people got born again, they lost everything. They lost their family. They lost their money. They lost their place and culture. And so they would say, all right, I'm going to be your godparent. I'm going to come alongside of you, and I'm going to walk with you on this journey of growing in Christ. And so what I want to do is take my season as a godmother and say, now let's look at what's going on. Most popular fairy tale is Cinderella. And do you know why? Cinderella has the exact same story arc as redemption. Mm -hmm. It's a rise, fall, rise. And so we have this attraction to this beautiful Cinderella that a prince comes and finds us. We're under a cruel taskmaster, but there's an identifier with Cinderella and it is her glass slipper. It is what elevates her. It is what sets her apart. But I am afraid that women are stomping their feet in glass slippers and they are forgetting what elevates them, what sets them apart because of anger and frustration. So I really wanted to say to them, I'm going to just be your godmother here right now. And I'm going to tell you, stomping your feet in glass slippers is going to leave a pathway of brokenness for the next generation. We are seeing divorce. We are seeing gender dysmorphia. We are seeing the fallout of generations of broken choices. So I want to value women, not at the expense of men. And I want to value men, but not at the expense of women. And what I see right now is God's mandate for the mothers to wake up and begin to call forth the strength 
and both the sons and the daughters and the older men and the younger men. We have to see what is going on and speak what God wants to speak into that situation so things begin to shift and heal. You, you were talking about, and let me, let me say this, what you're hearing is what you're going to get. It's kind of like taking Lisa home <laughs> and letting her touch on all these things as a godmother, someone that's imparting. You notice how she was talking about how you are able to be a help meet, lift men. Men who are defeated or trapped or held or captive, they have a worthlessness feel because the enemy tells them how sorry they are. He's an accuser of the perfect brethren. He's the accuser of the brethren nonstop. Men find themselves in agreement. I'm just a piece of junk. I'm worthless. Yeah. I believe about 90% of the people sitting in church have an orphan mentality yeah. and they feel like they're basically worthless. Yeah. They don't realize whose child they are. Mm -hmm. So when you're te teaching them, the wife can help a husband realize you may be trapped, weak, or defeated, yeah. but you need somebody to lift you up. But here's the deal. If, if you could just get the women to hear what you just said, mm -hmm. they would bloom like Cinderella and, and they could live the story, but inspire it and even see the men rise up to be like the prince that's in shining armor. Yeah. Your children can come up to be that. Yeah. I mean, this can be so much. It can be a, a whole lot of heaven on earth. Yeah, Instead of just a little glimpse, we can see the glory of God. I see it on you. You act like you see it in us. We praise God. It's not an act. I see it on you. <laughs> well, you know, I love that you brought that up. There's an obscure scripture in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22 says, God will do a new thing. He says, a woman will encompass a warrior. And I looked at all of the different references I had access to. I looked at N.T. Wright. I looked at what does this mean, this new thing? A woman encompasses a warrior. And do you know what? Nobody knows what that represents. And you know why I think it is? I think it's something that is still yet to happen. And when I prayed into it, I, I feel like you actually kind of painted this. I saw a man in a chair, dejected, discouraged. And I saw a woman come behind him and she put her arms around him and she began to whisper in his ear and she began to remind him that she, that he was a warrior, that dragons were real, that he was a son of the most high God. And I feel like right now we need some Debras to rise up to say, all right, village life has ceased. That's the King James version. But the NET says, Warriors were scarce in the land until I, Deborah, arose, arose a motherly protector. Wow. And so we need motherly protectors to wake up and call forth the sons and daughters back into their strength. Powerful. Mm -hmm. It's here yes. and much more. Can you touch briefly? We, I tell people this is not the Oprah show. You know, we don't have, it's not Dr. Phil. We don't have an hour, but we got about, about three minutes. Can yeah. you touch that, the gender gap? Because you must've thought that yeah. was important to want to talk about it. Yes. So again, I feel like that brokenness that we're seeing in the men and the brokenness that we see in the women eventually can only be healed by God. But as we pursue God, we become closer to one another. And so Again, women have this beautiful, intimate power to speak healing and strength into other people. But if they're broken, they can't do that. So what we're seeing right now is we're seeing women devalued in their healing and their nurturing strength. So you brought up abortion. You know, one of the hardest things for women to recover from is actually when they have an abortion because of the shame and then it goes against their nature to protect and to bring forth life. So we've got women that are actually feeling like their very feminine nature is being undermined. And then in the church, and again, I'm not saying this mean, but in the church, there's a gender gap. When we have male leaders who are diminishing and devaluing women 
who God says, this is your answer, buddy. This is what I created. Take what is not good. And it's not just marriage. It's, it's beautifully expressed in marriage. But men and women together in situations find better solution than women over here and the men over here. So we need voices of mothers and fathers together. And then what I love is there's this beautiful invitation in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You know, James and Betty, right now, Christian does not have a very good label attached to it. But I want to raise up children of God, people who understand you're going to have to confront, not compromise, to make peace, that you're going to speak truth, that you're going to speak love, that you're going to speak in such a way that people will be like, whoa, I was just in the presence of a child of God. And then the message paraphrase say, you're blessed when you can teach people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That is when you find out your place in the family. So you and I discover who we are by helping others discover their value and who they are. And that is a, that is a prayer that to be answered is miraculous. What you said for us to learn how to come together. God invited the whole nation of Israel after chapter one. It's just listing everything that's wrong and everything's wrong. Just like what we see here. Yeah. And you can just see it. But he said, come, let us reason together. Yeah. Though your sins, your wrong, your failure, your misery be red like crimson, scarlet, it shall be white as snow. Beautiful. Boy, I mean, that, you talk about lifting somebody mm -hmm. up. You talk about making a prince. You talk about getting a warrior suited up. To go in battle, not with partisan views or people, not with a, a sectarian view or denominational perspective, but with the principalities and powers. Yeah. The principalities and powers in the realm of the spirit and be overcomers. That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Lisa, you're always a blessing. If we had an audience here, they'd be clapping. <laughs> they'd probably be standing up. You really do radiate the glory of God. You and John both are just, okay. to me, you're just a free, a free flowing river of life and love and transforming truth delivered in redemptive, unconditional love. And that's what we hear. And that's what's in here. I really hope you'll get the book. And then Lisa, I know, I know you're going to be praying with us because you've been to the mission yeah. field. You and John have been and basically seen what we do in person all over the world. But you've marched into hell in the areas where kids and children are trafficked. And you've watched love reach them, rescue them, begin the restoration process. And many of them have a job, have a future. They become leaders in the most devastated situations. And it's all because of the love of God flowing through you. You know, when you've been ministering, I'll soon be ministering 60 years. When you've been ministering on the mission field now between 25 and 30 years, and you've watched like the resurrection of the dead and nations change, I'm telling you, you're going to want to respond to what you see right now and become the supernatural miracle that somebody needs. I'm telling you, you are going to be a miracle today. You watch, listen to God, and then you respond as he directs. My story really starts from the age of seven. I was left alone at home a lot, and um, a lot of predators really came through the house. Um, specifically, a very distant uncle. He would be there to take care of me, but then he started to do things, and they were things that I really didn't understand at all. My childhood was really cut short and um, by really being abused and molested by this man, it really tormented me. A traumatic experience can profoundly shape one's worldview. For Life's missionary partner, Giselle Meza, childhood trauma has left her heartbroken for victims of sexual abuse and human trafficking in South Asia. Giselle recently connected over the internet with our mission team to share the story of a child we'll call Devna. We had gone into this village and we had found this little girl Devna on the side of the road 
in conditions that you could never imagine. And she had been taken by her trafficker. And then along the way, he decided to rape her multiple times and leave her to die alongside of the road. Devna's story is one where we rescued her from one of the worst situations. And now that she's in our home and has had uh, four years with us now, she is has blossomed into the most beautiful, precious little girl that now has developed her personality. She's safe. She loves to dance. She loves to sing. She loves to play. Rescue efforts like these are the direct result of compassionate support by Life Today viewers. Shortly after we spoke with Giselle, her team rescued another child from traffickers who was just four years old. Human trafficking does not stop for global crises. And with your help, neither will our fight against it. It's just almost impossible to fathom, imagine how anyone can take advantage of a precious little child and, and be attracted it's, uh, it's just the essence of evil, the evil one in control. And then, Betty, to think that these money-minded worshipers of money can use them. I don't, I don't think there's any need for us to, you know, lose our train of thought thinking about how, why, when we have the answer that she just shared. You helped us reach, rescue, and begin the restoration process. What do you pray that everyone watching will do right now? I pray that you will take the opportunity to join with us and let's reach out and help these precious children that didn't have the opportunity to have beautiful growing up years of their, of their young lives. I, I think about them and I think, God, I am so blessed that I didn't have to experience anything like that, that any in our loved ones, our family had to experience anything like that. I'm grateful, so grateful that I want to help others to avoid it. So I want to be a part, James and I always want to be a part of reaching out and helping these precious little ones to know the joy of growing up in a normal childhood and to know the joy and the love of Jesus Christ. So please join with us. Let's take this opportunity to reach out in love and help these little ones. You saw what our beautiful mission partners do and she's planted her life in the midst of that suffering because she knows what it's like. But here's the thing I want you to understand. She can only stay there and put God's arms around these beautiful, precious children and girls. She not only helps get them out, but she's part of the restoration process where she actually teaches them a trade, how to make a living, how to live. But it all happens because somebody watching life today would say, okay, I'm going to set them free. I'm going to be a part of that cycle. It takes $128, that's the average, to set one free. We've got some caring friends of life who said, we'll double what you give because we believe in it. That means if you gave $128, you didn't rescue one, you rescued two. We ask you to give $1,280 if you possibly can. This is our last week now. We're going to need some miracles today. You give the 1280, now it won't just rescue 10, it'll rescue 20. We have some gifts to send you to say thank you. What I'm asking you to do right now is get your bank card, use it like a check, make the gift God put on your heart. We have some beautiful gifts that will bless you. Could save your life and add years to your life and life to your years, actually could. And, and the prayer box too, you're gonna love this because you're gonna take things to God and watch him work. Would you go get that card? If you want to write a check, get a check, make it to life, but call the number and tell us you're mailing it in. You can go online and make the gift or you can call that number that's a prayer line always paid for by love and make the gift God puts on your heart. Please do it now. This is the last week. Father, we need a miracle of support, a miracle of love. In Jesus' name, thank you for becoming someone's miracle. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. 
Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $250,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be double to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift, we'll send you Natural Remedies. This beautifully illustrated and essential book explores ancient nutrition and the health benefits found in God's creation. A valuable reference with biblical insight to help you live your best life. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive this beautiful prayer box. Inscribed with the words from Philippians 4, 6, this wonderful keepsake includes pencil and paper to write down prayer requests you want to give to God. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request a Mother Strength bronze sculpture. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. These children are absolutely beautiful. They are filled with families that love them. Now, they're poor, and be just because they're poor, it puts them at terrible risk for being taken, for being kidnapped, for being trafficked and forced into labor or sex trafficking. And if they get taken, nobody's gonna know where to find them and people can't go after them and look for them. We don't wanna see that happen. Friends for Life is building a network with partners around the world so that children in these kind of conditions don't get trafficked, don't get taken away from their families. Won't you partner with us? I want you to pray and ask God what he would have you do. I want you to pick up your phone, I want you to go online, and I want you to be part of the Friends for Life to partner for rescue. You know, I've I, I said that this is the last week, and that, that means, Father, we really need the help of everybody who can help. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you can help, do so. If you help earlier in this emphasis, how about this last week? We'll send you the gifts that we just showed you, and we have shared a gift with you. Her book, you can get online or in the bookstores. We'll send it to you. If you'll just reach out and touch some of these who've been trafficked, who need to be reached, rescued, and restored. You do that and you say, would you please send us Lisa's book too? You better believe we will. Lisa, thanks for being the woman in Christ that you are and the incredible communicator and taking the time to share in the writing. I know the effort and being with us. Just know we're all praying for you. Well, yeah. thanks for being my godparents. <laughs> well, you better believe we're glad to be. <laughs> Messenger International. Or Lisa Bevere. Yep. That's all there is to it? Super easy. Okay. Lisa Bevere. Thank you all for watching life today and sharing life today. You really are a blessing. Bless and give your life to your father. The one who help you see. Won't leave you recklessly. Download the new Stream app today for breaking news and commentary. Be equipped to think clearly about the critical issues of our day. Available for Apple and Android phones. Sheila Walsh wants you to know that Jesus can take the burden of all your baggage and help you walk in freedom. Tomorrow on Life Today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.